On the 14th of July, 1518, in the town of Strasbourg, a woman named Frau Trophia began to dance, and she didn't stop. Instead, she carried on for six days straight, and even more alarmingly, her condition soon spread to those around her. One source says that 34 people were affected by the 18th of July, and within the month as many as 400 from a mix of genders, ages and backgrounds were or had been dancing uncontrollably. Soon, some of them began to drop dead from their exertions. This is History Calling, where I bring you new videos every Friday on the weird and wonderful events of the past, and today we're asking, why did people dance themselves to death during so-called dancing plagues, for Strasbourg was far from the only outbreak, and what did our ancestors do to try to cure it? Dancing plague, also known by many other names, including dancing mania, tarantism or choreomania, emerged across Europe many times during the medieval and early modern periods. There was an outbreak in Kolbig, Saxony in around 1015 for instance, and others in aix la chapelle Liege, Utrecht, Tongres, Cologne and Metz in 1374. In a 1997 article on the phenomenon, details of which are in the description box, scholars defined it as a psychophysical disease, always characterised by an uncontrollable impulse to dance and a morbid love of music. Physical contact with an affected person was not a prerequisite for contracting the disease. The sight or sound of someone already affected could be sufficient. In its epidemic form, an attack was generally preceded by premonitory nervous symptoms and the disease was commonly manifest by physical symptoms, including death. Contemporaries weren't quite sure what to make of it all and came up with a number of explanations. Some said it was a punishment from God for sinful behaviour, others that it was a sign of demonic possession. The idea that it was some form of epilepsy has been mooted, but the symptoms don't match and in any case epilepsy is not contagious. If you're an arachnophobe, meaning you hate spiders, you won't like this next explanation, which is that outbreaks in Italy between the 15th and 17th centuries were caused by tarantism, or a reaction to the bite of a spider, possibly a tarantula. You may feel better though when I tell you that the evidence for this being the case was always very weak. Not everyone who danced reported being bitten, and it was unclear if the venom of any spider they might have reported a bite from was actually poisonous to humans, or would have caused a reaction such as this. Modern commentators and doctors have been unable to settle on a definitive cause either, though one of the more intriguing ideas put forward is that it might have been mass ergot poisoning. Ergot is a kind of mould which can grow on the stalks of rye and wheat. When ingested, for instance by eating bread made from infected wheat, it can cause symptoms including spasms, mental disorientation, gangrene and vomiting. Also known as St Anthony's fire, it has been blamed for a number of other incidents in the past, including the hysteria around the Salem witch trials in 1692-93. However, it has been discounted by most as an explanation for the dancing plagues as the symptoms were too uniform amongst the sufferers. In other words, we would expect to see different people react in different ways to the effects of ergot poisoning, with some showing a less severe response depending on the amount of poison they had consumed and how their bodies reacted to it, and a range of symptoms present which would vary from person to person. Those affected by the dancing plagues all had remarkably similar symptoms however, and gangrene was never among them. It's also very unlikely that the spasms induced by this type of poison would have allowed them to keep dancing for days on end. The scholar John Waller, in an article I'll leave details for in the description box, further notes that the ergotism theory also fails to explain why virtually every outbreak occurred somewhere along the Rhine and Moselle rivers, areas linked by water but with quite different climates and crops. By far the most popular modern explanation is some sort of mass hysteria which resulted in the dancers entering a trance state which enabled them to keep going either without noticing the pain and exhaustion they were suffering or without being able to stop even if they were aware of it and they frequently seem to have been for contemporary accounts record that they would often cry and plead for help when they were able to. 
Outbreaks seem to have been common across the centuries in one particular part of Europe because people were already mentally primed to fall victim to a dancing plague, having heard stories of earlier incidents. Waller calls this a cultural contagion and writes that only where there was a pre-existing belief in the dancing curse could psychological distress be converted into the form of a frantic dance. One of the main causes of such psychological distress is thought to have been the difficult social, economic and political conditions in the areas where the dancing occurred. The 1374 outbreaks happened within living memory of the Black Death, which occurred between 1346 and 1353 when huge swathes of Europe's population were wiped out by bubonic plague. In the 30 years leading up to the Strasbourg outbreak, the town had suffered through field harvests which led to famines, freezing temperatures, plagues, floods, a comet sighting in 1492 which was seen as a bad omen, and peasant revolts. The dancing mania itself began during a very hot summer and, so it has been argued, may have been a kind of release of people's pent-up frustrations and fears about their lives in early modern Europe. As for the spider bite theory, though actual bites likely didn't cause the dancing, fear that they might may, in some cases, have been enough to induce the dance. So-called cures varied. During the 1374 outbreaks, religion was apparently seen as the only potential way out of the situation. There were religious processions and priests held masses and performed exorcisms. In Strasbourg, methods other than religious interventions were tried first, as initially the local council tried to get people to wear themselves out by providing music and taking the afflicted to special dancing zones, such as the local guild hall and marketplace. This turned out to be a disastrous approach, which led to numerous deaths, and soon music and the holding of organised dances had to be banned from the town. The populace now turned to religious cures similar to those used during earlier outbreaks, and the afflicted were taken to the nearby shrine of St Vitus. According to one chronicler, When they were sent to the chapel of St Vitus, they were divided into three groups and conducted by specially appointed guardians. There they held a mass for each group, and the sufferers were led round the altar and made a small money offering. The sufferers were driven out to Zeburn, which is where the chapel was, in three horse wagons at the expense of the city. These people were also, apparently, given small crosses and red shoes, on the uppers and soles of which crosses had been drawn with consecrated oil and which had been sprinkled with holy water in the name of St Vitus. This approach worked. The dancers were cured and the plague is sometimes known as St Vitus' dance as a result. This would strongly suggest that the dancing was indeed caused by mental distress rather than any kind of poisoning or epilepsy, and shows how strong religious beliefs were at the time that they were able to successfully combat a disorder such as this. Dancing mania eventually disappeared as the world entered the early modern and then the modern eras and many people's religious and superstitious beliefs changed or faded, while their lives became gradually easier as food supplies and medicines improved. However, episodes of mass hysteria still crop up from time to time in the modern world. In 1962, for instance, there was an outbreak of laughing mania in a girls' school in Kashasha in Tanzania. It spread to other schools and only ceased when they were closed, having lasted for 18 months in total. I think it would be wrong, therefore, to become complacent and think that we've evolved beyond the possibility of mass hysteria. Given the correct set of circumstances, we probably aren't as different from our medieval ancestors as we might like to think. But what do you make of these dancing plagues? Is mass hysteria a sufficient explanation for you, or do you think something else was going on? Let me know in the comments section below and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel with notifications switched on so you never miss an upload. If you love a good historical mystery I recommend you check out my video on the mysterious disappearance of Benjamin Bathurst next or my explorations of the bizarre case of Skeleton Lake in the Indian Himalayas and an Irish countess who supposedly lived to be 140 years old. Whatever you select please enjoy and until next time keep learning.